Welcome students. We're going to be looking at 1950s society with these notes today, doing a brief overview of what society looked like in the 1950s. As you can see right here, uh, there's uh, car culture that's really big. There's um, the nuclear family that's pretty important, and also civil rights. We'll focus a separate section of notes on civil rights focusing these section mainly on uh, the culture of the nuclear family and automobile. Uh, so conformist society, as you can see with this picture, um, there's this um, increased conformity that happens where everybody's dressing the same, everybody um, purchases from the same place. So um, people are politically apathetic because there's this um, normalcy and don't rock the boat attitude that happens. This is known as the silent generation because uh, there's not going to be a lot of political disputes because if you're uh, politically disputing about something, then uh, you're targeted as a communist. Uh, the medium family income is going to rise during this time period. Uh, from a little over 3000 to 5000 per year. And that seems pretty low, but the uh, value of money was obviously different at that time. Uh, the role of women is going to change as well. People got married a lot younger. The medium age of women in 1956 is going to be 20 years old. Uh, lower divorce rates from the 40s, higher number of kids. Uh, during the 1940s, there was a lot of um, stressors uh, like the Great Depression and World War II, men away at war. Uh, but also, uh, you had uh, men uh, running off from their families during the Great Depression because they felt like they couldn't uh, provide for their families. And so uh, there's lower divorce rates in the 50s because there's less of a reason to do that. More women started but did not complete their education. Uh, a lot of that having to do with um, starting a family, halfway through your education. Parenting focused on loving and nurturing uh, children. Um, the idea of uh, child care uh, starts to uh, develop so that a woman can work outside the house. However, that working outside the house was... Um, not the ideal, uh, but that more of that homemaker um, attitude. Uh, so people are getting married a lot younger. That's the key takeaway uh, from this. Uh, when it comes to religious revivals, a um, couple key takeaways. Uh, first one is that regular church attendance is going to rise during this time period. Um, evangelists such as Billy Graham will be very um, big during this time period. It's the beginning of televangelism. Uh, the adage to our currency in God we trust uh, was added to our currency during this time period. A lot of people think that the Founding Fathers put that in the currency. Uh, they did put a lot of God into um, our infrastructure, our, our buildings and everything in the government, uh, and also uh, into the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence. Um, more of the Declaration of Independence than the Constitution. Um, but during the 1950s, there was this feeling of, hey, we need to um, intentionally go back to God and to focus on that. And so in God We Trust was added to the currency. Also under God was added to the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance was created uh, after the Civil War, and under God was not um, in it originally. Now, um, this seems all great, and um, there's great uh, unity um, and focus on God during this time period. But unfortunately, much of the motive is not authentic. It's this fear of associating with anti-religious values of the USSR. So there's this fear tactic that's used uh, that when we put in God we trust, under God, um, it's more of a political means versus a sincere um, turning to God. And so uh, people like Billy Graham and others would be sincere but much of the government would use it insincerely by trying to control the people through uh, religion during this time period and conformity. And so if you uh, disagree with something uh, minor theologically, you're seen as an outcast during this time period. Uh, we're going to have improved health care. 
you've probably heard the uh, Jonas Salk Institute, uh, which discovers uh, the polio vaccine. Polio, uh, we have no clue today uh, in the Western world uh, how devastating polio was, but polio was an epidemic. It, um, it was just destroying um, young lives. And so by 1960, the disease is almost eliminated. Antibiotics such as penicillin came into widespread use, so I would definitely know that uh, term penicillin. Advancements increased in life expectancy to 68 years of age. Um, so uh, back to uh, polio. Uh, third world countries today still battle with polio, um, but we've done a good job of eradicating that. Though I've heard that um, it's, it's started to come back, and so uh, maybe we need to do the uh, polio vaccine again, uh, but that's up to debate. Uh, TV in America. TV is going to change America more than any other form of media. So TV uh, in the home is, uh, is going to be a big thing. As you can see, that famous picture at the bottom right there of the family uh, watching the uh, small television program. Uh, television programs like Howdy Doody, Mickey Mouse Club, Ozzy and Harriet, Leave it to Beaver, The Lone Ranger. So sitcoms portrayed the ideal nuclear family. So when you're watching a um, program constantly that portrays a type of family, that's going to be your role model, so to speak. Um, and keep in mind that uh, African Americans and uh, Hispanics and and other people were not portrayed in television. It was it was um, only white families, um, and it was a very uh, structured um, model that people would see. Remember that HUAC, uh, House Un American Activities uh, Committee, is monitoring much of Hollywood and also TV at this time. And so uh, the father as the key wage earner and mother as the homemaker was uh, the big narrative that was done, uh, whether it's in Leave it to Beaver or whether it's in um, I Love Lucy with Lucille Ball, as you can see right here. So TV changed politics also as wealthier candidates could afford more airtime, more direct contact. So it's not so much of um, sacrificing your time and meeting with people uh, in person as a candidate, but now you're able to purchase airtime. And so um, the wealth of a candidate starts to play a part in politics, and I don't think that we would ever turn back from that. I'm going to skip this uh, I Like Ike um, campaign ad. Well, actually, it's pretty short. So as you see there, um, campaign ads like that, um, or speeches, as in uh, Nixon. Nixon was actually um, Eisenhower's VP. Uh, so both of them working together uh, helped Eisenhower to uh, have a, a very successful um, campaign. We won't watch that again. Oh, we have to. There we go. Uh, couple more things in closing. Uh, there's going to be a counterculture movement that happens, though. Uh, so as most people are conforming to society, of course, you're going to have those, especially intellectuals, that are uh, wanting to resist that conformity. And so you're going to have the first countercultural movement of the 1950s. We've had other countercultural movements before. You had the transcendentalism of the mid-1800s. You also had the uh, poets of the 1920s, uh, 
people writing such as uh, The Great Gatsby. Um, but in the 1950s, you're going to have the beatniks. In the 1960s, you'll have the hippies. Uh, and there is a rejection of middle-class consumer norms. So they don't want to embrace this consumerism. And so they're going to do what they can to uh, be different. They're going to embrace poverty, spontaneity, freedom. And so there's this... Um, real backlash to the 1950s that happens. And much of their uh, effort would inspire the 1960s hippie movement and anti-conformity. Uh, in closing, Eisenhower's Interstate uh, Highway Act would definitely transform the face of America. Uh, culturally, TV transforms the family, but it's really the Interstate Highway Act that transforms uh, society where you live so much more as well. Uh, the federal highway system would be expanded, so now you don't have to live in the city in urban places to work in the city anymore, but now you can work in the suburban because of the, the uh, Federal Highway Act. So now, now you're able to uh, live 15, 30, 45, 60 miles from your job because you can uh, drive on the highway. So make sure to uh, upload these notes to Google Classroom, and I will see you later.